There's an old saying that says, in order to change your life, you must change your life. I typically hate phrases like that because I find them to be trite and unsatisfying. They're not deep enough for me. They don't mean anything. But as I sit here in our relatively brand new studio, I find that today is the start of something new, something big, for me at least. See, by nature, I've always been a night owl. I used to routinely stay up till 2 or 3 in the morning and wake up around 10 or 11. I had jobs where I would work from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., It was normal for me to find my peace and quiet in the evening hours. I loved it. I could get so much done. There was nobody around to bother me from whatever I wanted to accomplish. Anything I wanted to do was at my fingertips. If something didn't get done, I couldn't blame it on the phone calls or random emergencies. I had dedicated silent time alone and I I conditioned myself to be like that for 41 years of my life. When I was a kid, I absolutely hated getting up in the morning. I hated going to school. I hated being tired. But mostly, I hated someone telling me how I needed to spend my time. This is probably one of the reasons I rebelled and became a night owl when I had the chance to make my own schedule. I didn't like anybody telling me what to do or how to do it. As I've gotten older, I can tell my body is changing. No longer can I go out at 10 p.m. to start my night. There were many times where we'd go to a bar or go to the movies that late and then stay out all hours of the night after that. I'm glad I'm changing because I no no longer want to live like that. There's something so unmotivating about about getting up at 10 a.m. Look at any successful person, or healthy person for that matter, and you don't find many of them staying up that late and getting up that late in the morning either. Granted, there are people who defy the odds. Perhaps they're old and they live like that, but that doesn't mean it's good for them or even healthy for them. Yesterday, Kate and I were walking up in the hills above our house here in San Juan Capistrano and just dreaming. People that live in those mansions have land. They have peace. They have quiet. They have space. They have freedom. I'm not saying that I'm jealous of people like that, but what I'm saying is that I want to be more in control, not just of the direction of my life, but how it plays out as well. So rather than ask myself questions like, why do these people get to live here? Or how can they get to live the good life and I don't? Kate and I were asking questions like, what do we need to do in order to achieve that level of success? Now, of course, I want to reap the rewards of success, but I much more enjoy the journey it takes to get where you want to go. As the old saying goes, it's all about the journey. I mean that. Anybody can win the lottery. All you have to do is buy a ticket. That takes no work. It takes no discipline. That just takes about zero effort, planning, or even foresight. This is why the majority of lottery winners end up broke within a few short years. Nothing valuable comes easy. It takes work. It takes hustle. It takes grinding. But even more so, it takes people who love those things, not for the reward they'll get or the ego stroke others might give them. It takes people who love those things for the sheer sake of loving them. When was the last time I loved the grind or the hustle? In years past, when I was first starting out, did I love rent being due and having nothing in the bank two days before it was due? Hell no. So I have to ask myself, what was it that kept me in the game? I believe it was something deeper than loving the grind and loving the hustle. It was purpose. It was legacy. Some people love the journey, and I do too, but not all the time. And I love grinding and working for things. That does take a level of character development, but for me, it was having a greater purpose. What was my life going to stand for? How were the world, or at least my world, going to be changed because I was here? This is much deeper than just loving the grind. This is purpose. Some people don't yet know their purpose, and for them, I feel sad. If you don't know what your purpose is on on this earth yet, I would highly encourage you to take the necessary steps in, in order to find out what your purpose is. There's nothing more unmotivating than not knowing your purpose. It's a sucky place to be. I was that way for about 35 years of my life. I had no idea what I wanted to do or how I wanted to do it. I worked about 15 or 20 jobs by the time I was 25. And some of these jobs included scooping ice cream, working construction, delivering pizzas, painting curb addresses on houses, being a veterinarian's assistant, being a photographer's assistant, being a janitor, doing security, working in an IT office, cleaning storage units, working at a surfing magazine company, doing SEO web design, working at a rec center, bagging groceries at a grocery store, and the list goes on and on and on. Doesn't sound much like a person who knows what they want to do, right? I did these odd jobs until I was about 36 years old. But I always knew I wanted to work for myself, run my own hours, and control how I live and what I was doing. Eventually, 
I stumbled onto something I was passionate about, alternative health and helping people heal themselves without drugs, chemotherapy, surgery, radiation, or any other aggressive Western modalities. For about eight years, I learned everything I could about alternative health and natural healing. Then after about eight years of learning and experimenting on myself, I decided to start a radio show interviewing the top natural doctors in the world and creating a career for myself. My purpose is simple, and it's not just related to health. And it's to help people wake up, take responsibility for their lives, and realize that we've been lied to on just about every level. My purpose is to empower people to start researching and stop taking other people's word as the definitive truth or the final answer. If more people do that as a result of me being here on this planet, then my life's purpose is complete. It's my contention. When we take responsibility for our lives, when people do that, the better their life will be as well as those around them. When people are fully awakened, humbly seeking the truth and taking care of themselves spiritually, emotionally, and physically, it becomes infectious. Then the people around them will start doing the same thing and slowly but surely the world starts changing. See, with 7.7 billion people in the world, this is a tall order and will take some time to fully actualize itself. With all that said, there have been things that I've let slip lately. As humans, we go through waves of things we do and then we fall away from doing them. It's just natural. It's normal. I haven't been reading as much lately. I love reading books and I always have. I've been so busy producing shows that I've let this part of me slip. I've also stopped doing meditation and Qigong, two things that are necessary for me and my personal growth. It's really easy to let extra self-care things like this slide. I've also missed writing on this website. As you can tell from my archives, I started out with a bang and then things slowly slipped off. I want to leave a legacy and writing on this website is a part of that. I just got so bogged down with the grind of production work for Extreme Health Radio that I let things slide and I don't like that. So I decided enough was enough. When Kate and I were walking in the hills the other day, I realized I needed to get back to things that really mattered. Not only is writing on this website something that feeds my soul and allows me to express myself unhindered, but it also is a place that can serve to help people into the future while earning some side money as well. The latter is the least of the reasons to to continue working and writing on this website, but it's a nice side benefit. There's nothing wrong with earning some extra income doing something you love. I think everybody should be doing that. I, I will write more about that later. While we were walking, I asked myself and Kate, what if I had the discipline and decided to write every single day for three full years? That would be rough 10,080 articles, give or take, 10,080 videos, 10,080 audio versions of the, those articles floating around out there on the internet, helping people and passively earning us extra money. But that takes discipline. So my new goal as of... April 9th, 2017, as you can see, I don't follow rules when it comes to goal setting, or I would have done this on January 1st, 2017, is to write every single day. Kate and I both have a love for writing. She has her own website and is working on a book right now. We are planning on having kids very soon, so it's really important that we get into the habit now and start creating time for ourselves as much as we possibly can. She needs uninterrupted silence to write, which I understand, and we only have two bedrooms in our condo. So I will wake up at 6 a.m. every day, which I did today, and drive to the office, which is only about four minutes away from our house, and do my daily meditation, my qigong, my reading, and my writing. I will be changing how we do our alternative health radio show as well. See, currently we do them, we record them from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. But we need to batch them and record them all on one day, which will be on Mondays. I will be able to do all of these personal self-care tasks before 10 a.m. so I can record the shows and still get this other important work done. It really is the only way. I have to actively carve out time to do these things. Anything that's important in your life is the same way. They'll never get done unless you create the time for them. This is what I love about being into natural health, personal development, and spiritual growth. You can't half-ass it. You have to develop the disciplines and develop the habits. I love the grind of doing the things that I love because it not only makes the world better because it's aligned with my purpose, but it also helps make us extra money passively and helps me to grow. I found that when you force yourself to do something difficult like lifting weights, public speaking, etc., and you get better at it, it causes you to have a humble confidence. You have a self-esteem because you know you're doing something that most people either don't have the stomach or discipline to even consider. So for me, I had to find a place in my schedule to get these simple disciplines done. I had to change my entire schedule. I had to change how we organize our time in terms of when we eat dinner, what time we go to bed, etc. 
So as the saying goes, if you want to change your life, you have to change your life. So how are you going to change?